Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about D&D. Mmm. Mmm. So, first up for T&D today, we have our uh, neon, sort of Easter-y color, I guess, uh, Stone Creek coffee mug with the unicorn and the narwhal on it. Um, I just, I, I don't drink out of this mug, I'm not if I feel like. I really, really like it. Um, and inside of it, we have some, let me set this down, um, Bigelow lemon and echinacea, echinacea, I don't know, <coughs> tea. Um, again, this is one of those times where you'd think that I would practice saying this off mic before I actually get on, but um, no, I'm a disaster person and I can't be bothered to do that. Um, so, it, I'm just going to struggle through it. It tastes nice, though. It is very nice. It's good and light and uh, is actually... Uh, very good here at the end of a long work day. Mm. Tasty. Um, so, <clears throat> what we were talking about today is the tide result from the show poll from a couple of weeks ago uh, on my Patreon. Uh, again, if you want to be involved in suggesting shows, voting in show polls, go check out my Patreon. Um, all patrons are eligible to vote. Uh, all patrons from the second tier up are eligible to submit show suggestions. And uh, we go from there and see what people want me to talk about. And a couple weeks ago, we tied. Uh, last week, we had uh, a minor interruption in reviewing this bad boy right here. Uh, and so we are instead going to talk about the other one uh, that won that week uh, today. So uh, I've talked a little bit about uh, it on this show before, but today we are covering... Uh, how I personally develop a plot for my players in a uh, in, in a campaign, in a game, in a short campaign, long campaign, etc. I don't have super linear notes here, so this might be a little bit all over the place. But I'm going to do my best to sort of like keep it moving in the right direction, um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see where we end up with this. Uh, I. I I am actually a really big fan of this one right now because I am developing a new plot for a new campaign that I am starting here soon, um, as I have mentioned a few times on the show now. <clears throat> and so, uh, I, I am actually very recently experienced in doing this. Um, I've obviously done it before too because I've run other campaigns, but I, I've literally just been doing this uh, now, right now. I looked at my wrist where I don't have a watch to see what time it was. Um, so, uh, let's, let's talk about it a little bit. Um, I have a very specific way that I develop plots, um, and, uh, it, it, uh, I think it's kind of universal, uh, not universal, I think it's kind of widespread, but, uh, there is one part of it that I think I do more specifically than maybe other people do. So, um, first things first, uh, there are two kind of pillars to my development of a campaign plot. Um, the, uh, two of them are... Uh, the uh, the overarching story, uh, like the, the action arc that I want to complete, essentially. And then there is the character arc that all of my players want to complete. And uh, I, I feel like this is a pretty standard approach. Um, I, I run my home games out of the same world. I use, I've been working on this world for years now. Uh, I've put a lot of time and effort and love into it, and I am, I'm a big fan of where it's at right now, and so I use that world uh, to build all of my campaigns out of, which means that I have built this fairly, you know, open world that covers a lot of different bases uh, with the intention of being able to use it for multiple different campaigns with different themes and stuff like that. Uh, within this world, uh, I have various histories and plot points and stuff like that that can be picked up. Um, and I'll kind of, like, skim around and see what I want to do. Um, for me, in particular, uh, I get a lot of my inspiration for when I'm developing a plot from very specific things and how I think they would interact with different parts of my world. So, uh, my players don't necessarily know this yet, um, and I don't know that any of them in this other campaign consume this show, um, but I... Uh, came up with the idea for their first little arc here, it, more like the introductory chapter, uh, when I painted this little guy in the very first episode of um, Sunday Brunch. That's what my show is called. Jesus. Um, this is a Pickpo Cat. I love him very much. Uh, he is adorable, and I would die for him. But um, I came up with what I want to do uh, for their intro arc, 
when I painted this guy. Uh, and then I extrapolated from there uh, to a bunch of different other stuff. Um, so what they don't necessarily know is that it is probably going to be a uh, a sort of like planar hopping sort of thing. Uh, the Pickbo Cat in my mind, in my world, is going to be a piece of the Feywild. It is going to uh, relate heavily to those like half planes that are just off in the Shadowfell and the Feywild. Um, and so I, I am excited to do that because in addition to uh, my lovely little Pickbo Cat here, uh, I, when I got Fizzbands, was enamored with Moonstone Dragons and uh, stuff like that. Uh, the Then when we got, um, oh my god, I'm forgetting the name of the book, the one with the circus that goes in the Feywild. Oh, man. Hang on. Let me, wow, my brain just turned off entirely here. Uh, and I'm going to kick myself when I see what it actually is. Um, oh, man, where are we? Oh, I am so sorry, everybody, for this diversion here. Uh, because this is not what you signed up for. Wild Beyond the Witchlight, oh my god. Um, the stuff in that book, in addition to, like, Moonstone Dragons and stuff, really, really got me interested in, like, Feywild in particular. And I really love Critical Role, obviously. Um, I say obviously not because you should love it, but because I have talked about it several times on here. Um, and so uh, a lot of their stuff deals with like Shadowfell adjacent kind of things. And so I, I really like the idea of sort of beginning to be able to blend those things in my game. Um, and so I'm excited to work with that sort of thing. I have a vague idea of how I want or of the climax ish of like how I want those things to blend together. Um, that I'm not going to say on the internet in case they ever come across this episode and decide to watch it. But that's not the point. Um, so I have this overarching idea, right, of this, like, kind of interplanar thing focusing around the half-planes of the Feywild and the Shadowfell uh, as they associate with my world, uh, which I'm excited about. Then I have that very, very rough and vague idea that I'm running with. Then I do uh, my personal sort of like character backstory set up uh, here where I, uh, I ask them to give me a vague, non-specific uh, backstory for their characters. And by non-specific, I mean no specific people or pla or no, no specific places mentioned. People are fine. Um, and then I return to them with... Uh, all of the places that could be associated with them, plus a few other pieces of information that they might like to integrate in there. They take all of that information, they put it in their backstory, they expand on whatever parts they want to, and then they give me the full fleshed out version eventually, so that we, there is the collaboration there. Um, I also will ask them, uh, before we get started with the actual campaign, what is a general arc that you think you might like to see for your character? Not what they will see, because that will happen organically. But like, what do they think their character wants? What do they think that their character wants to achieve? How do they think their character wants to grow um, through the campaign with having no actual information on the campaign itself? Uh, because I do try and make my uh, campaigns neutral enough so that people can play what they want to play in those campaigns. Um, and so taking those two arc pieces and merging them together is how I come up with my actual plot. Um, if there is a character that is playing a cleric or somebody who is intimately tied together with a deity in some way, uh, cleric is just sort of the default for that. Uh, I do my best to make that deity a more prevalent part of the uh, campaign. Uh, it will help inform some of the like major things that are going on in my home game that's been running for a few years now. Uh, they all, most of them are associated with some god of some kind. Uh, their their like specialty weapons, their legacy weapons have all been created by these gods uh, a thousand some years ago and given to them. Uh, and so they are communicating with them on that level, but not necessarily on like the grander scale of like being devoted to them. So it's kind of like a whole thing. Um, and it, the gods will play an, a role if the characters want them to, uh, or if the overarching plot asks them to, but I won't force the characters into being these religious uh, entities just because the overarching plot says, hey, we need gods. Because that's not fun for the characters, and that's not what they want to do. So developing a plot around, like, centered around gods for a bunch of players and characters who don't care about the gods doesn't make any sense. So you have to take your overarching arc, 
and your character arcs and you have to marry them together in a way that they sort of like twist around each other to get you to uh, this extra, this this higher than, or this piece that is greater than the sum of its parts. That's what I'm looking for. Um, the two characters that uh, I've been given already uh, from the uh, of the three players, one of them is playing a Horizon Walker Ranger, which fits perfectly with the planar thing. I haven't told him about that at all, and he picked that one on his own. I'm so excited. I love Horizon Walker so much. Uh, and another one is playing a bard who uh, made a deal to be better at magic. And so there's so much that I can work with with that. So I am very excited to get to merge those into this idea um, that connects the Feywild and the Shadowfell together. Seems like a pretty solid start, right? Um, and so... As I then go forward from having these two base pieces of information and like building it out, extrapolating it out, um, I oftentimes, depending on how long the campaign is going to run, because um, I will sit down with my players and I will say, okay, how, how far do you want this campaign to go? Do you want to go, like, do you want it to be kind of shorter? Do you want it to be like, do you want it to get to high levels but stay mid length or short? Do you want it to get to high levels but be long? Do you want it to get to like mid ish, high ish levels but be very long? Like that kind of thing. My home game that I've been running for a few years, uh, it is going to be a level one to level 20 campaign. They're level 16 right now. We are very close to the end. Um, and this game uh, we haven't talked about yet because we haven't sat down for our session zero yet. I've just sent them welcome packet information and they've begun to develop their characters. Um, I, I spread my session zero out over a bunch of different things like they've done their RPG consent forms and all that stuff uh, already so that we have that but when we get to the table together we'll actually sit down and we'll review it and we'll talk about it and you know a whole thing um, so uh, I forgot where I started with this oh yes <laughs> um, so uh, I will figure out how long they want the game to be and then I will plot out from there uh, taking the overarching story uh, that I have decided on, this this arch arc that uh, is the story arc as opposed to the character arc, uh, they are not actually separate things. I want to make that clear. I'm, that's just how I'm differentiating it for the purposes of explaining it. Um, and I will essentially break it down into checkpoints based on the level of play that the characters are at at that point so that you can uh, sort of see the natural progression of how this thing will develop uh, over the course of time. This is not a rigid outline. This is not a, a set in stone thing by any means because the characters obviously can change everything at the drop of a hat. Um, they can get lucky and find a deck of many things and turn the world into a watermelon and everybody would be killed immediately or something like that. Like, Stuff happens, it's D&D, &D, that's kind of the point. Um, but, uh, when I have this, like, framework structure, so if I have uh, a level 1 to 20 campaign, uh, I won't necessarily break it down into just four sections. I might break it down into, like, five, ten. Uh, they don't have to be equal parts, so like, seven or something like that, maybe. Just, like, different acts, essentially, that they will go through. Um, and I will write in uh, story beats... Uh, that relate to their character arcs and they're like how their individual backstories and their individual characters will relate to those different pieces of the puzzle uh, as they go forward. This does create a relatively linear feeling when you look at it on a piece of paper because it is literally a timeline. But uh, when you actually sit down to play the game, uh, your story arc beats, you can treat as timed events essentially um, where if the players do not interject in any way, the this is how this timeline will progress, um, and then you will adjust it based on how the players actually interact with it. Um, so developing a plot and developing a storyline is not something that you can do heavily ahead of time if you want to run a truly open world game, uh, which is what I try to do. Um, but what you can do is you can set up a timeline for how things are going to go. Uh, and in doing that, you can then give yourself, you know, like the the basic beats that go out. And from there, you can sort of plot out, okay, if they don't interrupt anything that's going on here, these are the clues that they can find to lead up to it to try and prevent this thing from happening or to try and interject themselves into what is going on here. Uh, and you can sort of like lay the breadcrumbs starting very early then because you know what you are working towards. Uh, so for me, I look for an end goal. Um, 
and then the character development is uh, to me almost more important than the overarching plot and I will spend a lot of time trying to resolve character things um, regardless of what the overall uh, story was originally planned to be. Um, if somebody hands me something and is like, oh, I don't know, uh, my dad is an evil deity, you're like, okay, sounds good, here we go, and you sort of back burner all of your stuff, and you make them a focus of a chapter of the story so that they can resolve the, the stuff that they are doing. Uh, because ultimately, they want to resolve their character arcs in such a way that is satisfying to them, but they also want to feel like massive heroes, so you try and give them that as well. So to bring it all the way back to the beginning, um, I build my story, my plots, on two main pillars. That is the character pillar, and that is the story, quote-unquote, arc pillar. Uh, and I base my story arc pillar uh, on... Very specific things, usually. I, I will find something that I like, I will fixate on it, and I will run with it. That is how I ended up with this uh, new campaign uh, idea that I've got going here. I fixated on uh, this little guy right here, the Pikpa Cat, and I fixated on Moonstone Dragons, and now here we are. That is that is honestly how I got to this point. I started looking at it, and I went, man, wouldn't it be cool if... And then the idea is just like, pfft, sprayed out of my brain. Uh, and there's been a ton of really bad ones. I've pruned down this uh, idea bush a lot, but um, I'm excited for where it, it has turned and headed into. Um, but for me, it starts from a single point of information, and then it's, it spreads from there. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to do that for you. You can find uh, a different way to do it, but that is how my brain works, and that is how I process that. Um, so... Uh, all of that is to say there's no one good way or no one proper way to develop a plot for your game other than to be flexible and be willing to change a bunch of stuff as the players give you stuff to work with because you are trying to tell a character-driven story. If you're not trying to tell a character-driven story, it doesn't matter. It, like, their characters are literally just pawns in the game then. Uh, and if that's the game that they signed up for, then great. That is what you are going for. Uh, but if they signed up for a character development roleplay uh, game... You, you have to take their stuff into consideration. There's just no way around that. Um, but I think that that might be everything that I have to talk to you guys about on that one. Uh, which brings us to uh, shows for this weekend, because uh, it is, in fact, Friday, which means we need to talk about the whole weekend. Uh, so, first up, uh, for Friday, we have Mayhem D&D, Off the Rails, Ox Venture, Just Roll With It, The Strings of Fate, Rolling With Difficulty, World of Low, and the crowned DM. Um, for Saturday, we have a short list because Saturday is our short day. We have Dice Funk and Strange Hungers. And then on Sunday, we have Super Idols, Roll 4, Your Life, Grinning Griffin, Dungeon Drunks, Library of Nightmares, The Chaos Brigade, Rise of the Forsaken, Chromatic, Does Chromatic Dice, The Stradcast, and High Rollers. Please, if you check any of those shows out, let them know that I sent you because one day someone will say th something to me about it and I will enjoy that. Uh, but until then, we don't really have anything to do with that. So just let them know. Let them know. See what happens. Anyway, um, thank you guys so much for making me part of your morning routine. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much in particular to my patrons. You guys are the ones that make this show possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron and getting to contribute ideas and your voice to episodes like this, check out my Patreon. There is a link to it in the description of this episode. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's everything. Uh, so, uh, with, with all that said, have a lovely, lovely weekend, all of you wonderful little dice goblins. And don't forget, drink tea, play D&D, &D, and keep on rolling. <laughs>